Hi everyone, Jason McVicker, field agronomist in Northern Illinois. Wanted to take a little bit of time to uh, discuss kind of the progress of the crop, and in particular, uh, a challenge that we faced over the past uh, few years in the fact of uh, high residue and how we best manage it as we move into uh, this fall and then the uh, following 26 season. One thing to keep in mind is we need to make sure that we're uh, at least getting the, the residue sized. I know there's a lot of no-till beans out here in the countryside, but with the better and better corn crops we're growing, the biggest challenge is getting that good seed to soil contact and getting that seed where we, uh, where we ultimately want to place it. So sizing that residue is one step. But keep in mind, if you take a look at last year, we had a pretty dang dry fall, really didn't have a uh, whole lot of conditions conducive to helping those microbes and feeding those little critters to help break this residue down. Hence, some of the challenges that we face in some of the high residue soybean situations. Now we're in a different field, and obviously the uh, probably the biggest change is row width. And I bring that up in the simple fact that uh, some of these early planted beans, even uh, tilled, no-till, high residue situations, we need to make sure that uh, we're giving these things the best shot for success and we're putting them in a challenging condition. So make sure that you have the right population. And when you're looking at 30 inch rows, you got a lot of power in uh, neighbors or buddies to get that soybean crop out of the ground. Now it just so happens that right next to this particular plot location we have some 15 inch row beans and obviously we we uh, spread that plant spacing out but in this particular case I think it looks pretty dang good but we also notice we've got uh, darker soil. This field was fall chiseled and worked this spring, so we we're able to capitalize on burying some of that residue, get that breakdown process started, and ultimately get that soil warmed up quicker and get these beans out of the ground in a timely fashion. So everybody's farming practices is just a little bit different, but I highly encourage you if next year in 26, we are going to be planting in that mid-April time frame when conditions are fit. Let's consider really jacking the, uh, the soybean populations up. I'm even saying in 15-inch rows, hey, let's toy around with 170, 175. Do some experiments on your own farm, but we really need to get the crop established as quickly as possible in some of those challenging environments. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.